Okay, I would like to talk about traditional surnames in England today, where they come from, and so on. Surnames are a comparatively recent arrival in England. Before William the Conqueror, people had first names. They were called something like Cuthbert and Beowulf and Kinnewulf and Sexwolf. Yes, you have that too. It's a Saxon word. And uh, when William came, there were, were some they required to have surnames as well. And uh, so most of the surnames are, I don't know, date back to the 12th, 13th, 14th centuries, something like that. Um, and I would like to have a look at them. We may ask ourselves uh, why in a series of lectures on historical semantics, well, it's clear, of course, uh, surnames have a meaning. They had a meaning, they were introduced for a particular meaning. A lot of these meanings are not transparent anymore. Uh, this is one reason, so, I mean, getting back uh, their transparency. And um, I, I call this traditional surnames in England, not traditional English surnames, um, because I will include some Celtic surnames as well. Okay, which are not, strictly speaking, English. I mean, you all the, those names with Mac and O and something like this. And I call it traditional um, because I would like to have a look at only those uh, which date back to the Middle Ages. Of course, uh, you have a very late arrival of English surnames in the 20th century. One of the most uh, important ones these days is certainly Patel or something like that. So I will exclude those, you know, those late arrivals which, which came with immigration, okay, and look at the traditional ones. Okay, um, generally speaking, um, traditional surnames in England, um, well, they are one of four categories, which you can uh, use here. Yeah? Occupational names, I mean, names uh, referring to a profession in the Middle Ages, then you have nicknames, which may come as a surprise. No, I mean, nicknames all refer to various kinds of, um, I don't know, the way that people look, the way that people behave, and so on. You have topographical and locational names referring to a particular place where those people came from. Could be countries, can be regions, towns, cities, anything. And those taken from first names, patronymic names. I would like to have a, a detailed look at these four categories now, starting with occupational names. Here we go. So occupational surnames, um, it's clear uh, when we said they uh, were introduced in the Middle Ages, uh, you won't find any uh, people called uh, computer programmer or astronaut or, I don't know, corporate lawyer or telephone sanitizer or anything like that. No, I mean, of course, occupations which existed in those days. And this is also interesting from a cultural perspective. So what occupations were meant to be imported and probably what occupations have died out since then? We'll have a lot of those. Um, of course, Miller or Milner, something like this. Milton, another variety, referring to a Miller, of course, um, which is very, very prominent. So is Smith, uh, various varieties, you know, blacksmith, for example and so on. Uh, gardener, farmer, tailor, also Tyler, depends on the region where it came from. Weaver, shoemaker, potter, Faulkner, somebody who carries forks. Yeah. Mason, hunt, which is a hunter. Okay. Webb, a weaver, another name for a weaver, and so on. I mean, these are um, comparatively transparent, no problem with those. Um, but you see that uh, the Miller and the Smith, they must have had a very central position in uh, a medieval village because, I mean, yes, uh, uh, people, if you were the miller, you were the miller. You were the smith. You were the smith. Uh, miller had a very, millers had a very bad reputation, but um, nevertheless, uh, uh, smith and so on. I mean, very common names these days, and uh, we may understand them. Not so much with those here. Uh, Chandler, for example, a candle maker, Important profession in those days. Well, not anymore, probably. Uh, Chapman, uh, a, a salesman. 
Uh, we talked about this. Cheopan um, means to buy. Okay. And a chapman is somebody who makes people buy, who buys himself and who sells and so on. Uh, in German. Kaufmann, the same thing. Chapman. Uh, Kaufmann in German. All right. Or oh, yeah, Fletcher, a profession which is certainly not very much on the agenda these days. Yeah, an Aerosmith, but in those days, very important. A Fletcher, okay, an Aerosmith. Or Archer, the same thing. Yeah? A Bowman, very important before the advent um, of gunpowder, of course, yes. Bowman. Hayward, yeah, somebody who guards hedges. Warden, a warden of hedges. Well, well yeah, certainly. In, uh, uh, an important occupation in those days. Or Reeve, uh, Reeve, uh, who is a legal officer, a high administrative officer, um, a bailiff. Uh, you still have the word Reeve. Uh, you have it a lot in, in, in surnames, yeah, Reeve or Reeves, uh, something like this. Sheriff, uh, there you still have it. Yeah? Sheriff, who is strictly speaking a shire, Reeve. So an administrator of a shire, a shire, Reeve, yeah? the legal officer of a shire. And then shire, Reeve, became a well, process of sound changes, sheriff, in the end. But it's that. Yeah? Sawyer, uh, sawyer, somebody who saws, yeah? wood, timber, okay? in the forest, a sawyer. Um, Thatcher. Okay, you still have thatch cottages in the southwest, in England. What are those? Yeah, Thatcher, of course. Yeah? Very important. A Turner, who is a certain woodworker, um, something probably we won't see today. Turner, a woodworker. Yeah? Or a Cooper, yeah? a repairer of wooden vessels, vats, and so on. A uh, Cooper, um, which is still one of the most prominent names in Germany, for example. Cooper, Cooper, we have in German. Yeah? Same thing. Yeah? Cooper, Cooper. Somebody who repairs wooden vessels. Um, or a Stringer, a uh, Stringer, um, a rope maker who makes ropes, yeah? strings, strictly speaking. All right, y there you see. Um, uh, medieval professions, and from this standpoint, it is um, an important cultural relic because, yes, um, it may give us a good idea what was thought to be important in those days long gone. Uh, just one digression here because in the pandemic it's so uh, prominent this name Pfizer, uh, which is strictly speaking, which is a German name, of course. Um, going back to the Latin pistor. Okay, pistol, uh, which means baker. Well, pistol, and then you have a high German consonant, consonant shift, and pistol becomes pizza. Okay, pizza, and this is how Germans uh, would pronounce it today. Pizza, okay. very common name in Germany. Pizza, pista, even that, and so on. Uh, uh, going back uh, to uh, a Latin loan word. Uh, for a baker, and then spelling pronunciation, of course, in the English-speaking world, Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer, this is where we get our vaccines from, BioNTech, Pfizer, yeah, some of this. So Stringer, Cooper, Turner, and so on. All right, um, uh, the thing is, uh, the question we should ask ourselves is, occupational surnames, uh, why are they important? Um, most of all, because uh, they... Uh, reflect the saliency of occupational identities, which were much more fixed in those days. I mean, once you had a certain pre pre uh, occupation, position, whatever, you stuck to it. You had to, because you were organized in guilds, probably. And once you were a member of the guilds of blacksmiths, uh, you remained for life. This was one of your identity. This is your group of people you belong to, and you even inherited the occupation from your father, most likely. And uh, so you see, um, yes, uh, those occupations were traded on from generation to generation in medieval times. And even topographically, you see how important this sort of identity is. I mean, Smithfield in London, or Baker Street, or something like this. I mean, you even stuck together in certain areas of the town or city. Ah, this is your major 
um, identity. We have to think about it. Is it still like that today? Would people introduce themselves in the first place? Hi, I'm a telephone sanitizer. I don't know. Yeah, I hope not. Um, and today you change your, you, you're, you're able, you're free to uh, change your, your, your occupation. In medieval times, no. Almost impossible to change it. Once you had it, you were stuck with it. Okay. You can climb the social ladder today. In those days, impossible. Uh, impossible. Um, okay, so um, this is what I'm going to say is, uh, the first category of surnames is certainly occupational surnames, which is probably the, the, the broadest uh, category um, which came down to us up to the present day. Think about it, of course. And um, they uh, tell us a lot about the importance of a profession in medieval times, what professions were deemed to be important, what positions did people hold, ah, these things. Okay, um, so let's take it from here.